all about water, it's not about land. Three quarters of the earth is water. I've been windsurfing since I was 13 years old. I've always wanted to be a sailmaker all my life. And it's probably all I ever thought about. It's unreal. It's radical. It's the new age. My first job opportunity was to work in a chicken farm, and you know what I would have been shoveling there. <laughs> <laughs> Windsurfing is one of those things you can't perfect. The more you try, the better you get. You'll be able to do it if you just keep on trying. If you're going down to a weight performance contest, you're playing very heavy rock. Mozart. The best thing about sailing get rad is motivating other people to do the same and get sick. European wave sailors are, I don't know, they're difficult characters to explain. They really are and I, I'm still figuring them out sort of. They're pretty funny sometimes. I see so many sailors that go out and every time they pass you, they just got this scowl on their face and they're like, Arr! and it's like, what's the purpose? You know, if I want to have a scowl on my face, I'll go get a pickaxe and I'll go, you know, dig a trench and then I'll have a scowl. The three disciplines are really good because in Belgium you can do everything. I would get bored if I just would say waves. I like to go out of wave sailing, but I like to go slow on too. My best sailing day is when I'm away from everybody on my own, out there alone. Nobody to tell me what to do, nobody to answer to, and no appointments. It's not how you rig it, it's how you sail it, definitely. Because uh, I'm a junk rigger. If you don't have the right equipment, you're definitely not going to be the fastest one. I like to destroy equipment. Equipment's my favorite thing to destroy. You get for the rocks, no problem. Many people, they read the sales kind of a little bit wrong. To get the right trim in the sale, it's not that difficult. I rig for an hour or two, and, and then, you know, I guess the longer you rig, the better it gives you time to think on the beach and watch the surf. That's how you sail it. It's what you do with that thing. It's like jumping off a building. You leave, you launch, you're up in the air, you look down, you're 40, 50 feet up there. What do you do next? Nothing, you can't do anything. You just hold on and hope for the best. I myself like to jump a slalom board over a wave board simply because a uh, slalom board has a longer water line and you can actually use the wind and the board to get lift. I prefer jumping off the waves, you go a lot higher. You get this sensation of flying with the slalom boards. You just keep off standing in the air for maybe a second or two, 15 meters above the water. You can just see everything. If somebody's coming in on the next wave, you're just like way up over his mast and looking down at him and see his scared face. That's really, really funny. You still land, no matter what. You always come back down. I like doing forwards because it, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a rotation that your body doesn't want to do. It's an unnatural thing. It feels like you're going up one way and then all of a sudden you're in the air the other way. It's just a dope beat.
coming at you. One, two, three. Here we go again. It was pretty much do or die in the situation where I did it. So I figured, well, I'm going to have to suss it out. That was sitting down and just thinking about it for a while. And then I went down and I spent, I think, like two weeks of just getting clubbed. And then I worked it out. There's no way you can be able to do it without shedding your eyes and just praying the whole time. Uh, that's, that was the only way I was able to do it. It drives it forward because you know that once you get it down, it's going to be so incredible. It's just a dope beat coming at you. One, two, three. Here we go again. The adrenaline's pumping. You're psyched. Your mind is just spinning round and round. Yeah, I have a few tips for anybody that wants to do a forward loop. First of all, just get a lot of aspirin because you're going to be hurting a lot. I don't feel too good. I'm kind of sick. <laughs> Where I sail in Australia, it's mostly power. On small waves, you practice to sail on the other side of the sail, to do pirouettes on the face of the waves. First of all is that it's very good practice for a World Cup sailor where you have to learn how to sail both tacks. Diamondhead is a good place for practicing freestyle. It's a more radical wave to ride at Ukipa. Diamondhead is a musher wave. If you push it and you miss it, you don't fall as hard. Hukipa with its rocks and with the reef and the hollow waves, especially when it becomes big, it's more or less, it's a, um, it's a special place to sell for sure. Attitude, it's very important in wave selling. It's, um, if you have it, you'll do very well. If you check it out, you're going down the tubes real quick. <laughs> This is a fast haircut. <sighs> Alex doesn't have a fast haircut. Actually, Al's, Al's hair is unbelievable. I think that, um, him and Carla work on it a lot. Russia's haircut, it's uh, it's kind of like Max Hedrick. Pretty aerodynamic. I had a haircut like that when I was about four years old. You come walking around looking like a poodle. I don't have a fast haircut at all. I'm scared to go fast. Like, I, maybe I should have an afro, because I'm, I'm really scared to go fast. Definitely. Fred, yeah, he's got an interesting haircut. I think he's been cutting out a little bit too much. <laughs> I've been so fast, all my hair blew off. <laughs> Fred's haircut is so fast, it's incredible. And those glasses he wears, they're incredible. The, with the haircut, the combination is insane, let me tell you. Chicks must flaunt, man. It, it's, his wife must freak. Speedy <laughs> goggles. Um, you know, for each his own. For me, it's like wearing goggles or wearing gloves or, or wearing booties is like tying knots with mittens. They look good. But <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I think the feeling I get when I sail a speed board and chop is just pure joy.
well, that footage was sped up or whatever they want to say, you know, that's one thing. But the bottom line is it's going fast is going fast and, and you can say whatever you want about it, but it's cut and dry. Basically, you've got to have a charging attitude, just like the wave sailors talk about charging and bashing. You've got to have that attitude of just hanging on for dear life. When you think you're going to blow up, try to pull it back together. Yeah, Laird and I feed off of each other because we both want to win so badly. He's a charger. If you go out sailing with Laird, you know he's going to blow the doors down, so you better be ready to barge through everything with him. If you hold back or if you sheet out, you're dead. If you've ever been with someone that stays on the power, as long as Larry, you've been sailing fast. Fred's happy. Fred's a happy man. I mean, he's doing something that he really loves to do. I hate to have Laird pass me. I want to go out there and kick everybody's ass, Laird included. <laughs> oh, Laird and I crisscross a lot just to play tag, see how close is close. We'll sail along next to each other and he'll pull ahead, get an edge on me, and then I'll find a slot and try to get ahead of him. It's just cat and mousing. <laughs> I used to race motorcycles and there's just not enough excitement in it. When I go to a race, I don't need motivation. I got it. <laughs> Never give up a race. Always finish it, even if you're in last. I always try to win. I won't go to any competition trying to get second. There's no point in that. Laying your sail right down the way Bjorn does just means that you're pulling more Gs. To lean really hard into the turn, you've got to be going fast. When I criticize Bjorn or tell him something he did, maybe did wrong and he could maybe improve, he maybe doesn't accept it in that moment, but I think he thinks about it later. Sailing with Brit, that is always excitement because uh, Brit always gives you a run for a minute. She has a great stance, she's got a lot of strength, and above that she's got an aggro attitude. The thing I like most about slalom racing is uh, winning. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the gun's going off, you know, they got the Polaroid camera to see who's over, you know, and everybody's just going for it, you know, and then, you know, later on you find out, you know, two or three of you have been thrown out, you know, and the other guys made it through, you know, who were in last place. What they want to see is people eating it. They want to see people crashing course racing with spikes on your sail, no rules, nothing at all. When you sail a big board, you have a lot of time to think, you know. As you sail a big board, you're going usually so slow that you can think about anything you'd like to think about, and you have a lot of time to do it. I'm working with the carbon mask because, uh, first of all, it takes about a kilo off your rig. And um, the bend characteristics where it bends to a certain point and then doesn't overbend. 
Hey, aluminum mast feels definitely quite a bit different to what's uh, what we're now working on the carbon mast. Under stress, the carbon mast is quite a bit stiffer, it doesn't bend as much as an aluminum mast. And it feels more heavy to sell with, where the carbon mast is going to be a lot more solid in its shape. We've been working on it for over you know, span of five years now probably, and only now am I really starting to feel the difference in the stability of the sail, you know. I'm not too into all the sailmaker lingo and stuff, definitely, but I can feel the difference out there. Once you've experienced the lightness of a carbon mast uh, for high performance sailing, you couldn't go back to the other kind. And there's just a definite difference in the pitching moment and the feel of everything, the responsiveness of the sail. Everything is transmitted more quickly and uh, sharply. Okay, Barry, that was really interesting. Group loops are really fun. It's fun because all of a sudden you've got a different factor in the air, there's another person there. The first row of people, boom, 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 they do their loops. And then the guys coming up behind, they catch up because these guys lose a little bit of boat speed with loop. Then boom, boom, they do their little trip. And the next guy goes, oh, it was just, it was great. It was mass chaos going on out there. You have a confidence that you build up with sailing with, with these people for over a period of time. You feel confident that, hey, the board's one inch from my head, but I know he's, in the, he's driving the car and he's going to turn the wheel if I need, you know, if it's getting too close. Everyone's jockeying for position and you see a ramp and everyone wants to hit it. And you know, you gotta watch out. Attitudes are directly related to ability. Do I have an attitude? Yeah, I got an attitude, definitely. <laughs> Anything he does, he's always contorted in different positions. Laird has an incredibly bad attitude. He's just sick. You gotta have a bad attitude, definitely. You know, in one way or another, because you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself, break something. Uh, but you want to go for it. That's all there is to do out there. If you don't go for it, then it's just gonna be boring. Fresh will go straight into an eight-foot wave and not blink an eye. Might as well go and dash a couple waves here and there. I went out there, hit the lip, spun around, 360 degrees, smash, landed on my sail, came up laughing. That was my attitude. I loved it. Could never get enough of it. To be a good way of settling, you always have to go for it. Push it. That's the only way to do it. The excitement to go out there and do something that nobody else has ever done. It doesn't really matter if you make it or not, as long as you go for it and try. If you don't try, you wouldn't even make it. <laughs> I don't know, I think I was crazy. Okay, stop. <laughs>